Uh, hey guys, what is up? It's Dusty here, and welcome back to another crypto video. Cardano ADA broke its all-time high today, and it has left a lot of people wondering what is going to happen to the ADA price in the next couple of days. And today, I want to partially talk about that, plus a ton of other stuff. But for right now, put down below in the comment section, yes, I am holding ADA. Or no, I am not holding ADA. Or a different one is, are you bullish on this crypto? Because a lot of people think it is overvalued. First article of today says, Cardano reaches all-time high ahead of Ethereum in transactional volume. Today has been a monumental day for Cardano. Caught within the recent bull market, its token ADA hit a new all-time high price of $1.38 this evening. This marks an increase of approximately 2,600% over the past year as tracked by Masari. So to me, that is also really special because I've been with Cardano for years now and I've seen the price develop quite significantly. One fun fact is that on one of my exchange accounts, I only have Cardano and Verge as those two coins were really pumping in, I believe, 2018, somewhere at the start. Uh, they were doing really, really well. And so I believe my average price on Cardano was about 26 cents or so. Then throughout the years, that was a very, very high average price. And right now, that seems like a gem, right? That seems like a really, really wonderful thing. But if you just start to consider, I most likely bought some ADA right at either the, the, the previous spot here at about 20 something cents or so, or a little bit afterwards, maybe it was even 30 cents, then it looked like a very bad price for a couple of years, and right now, oh my days, does a 20 cent ADA look amazing. However, specifically in the last couple of days, we hit some crazy high prices, even touching $1.50. We didn't actually breach it on most exchanges, but we did hit it, and it left a lot of people wondering, what is going on? Well, to me, the most important question is, is ADA going to continue on to that trillion dollars? Charles Hoskinson said Cardano was going to be, uh, or had some potential to be the first trillion dollar crypto. Now, because nobody expected Cardano to go to the third, nobody expected Cardano to go with such severity and such huge moves, I am kind of questioning how high it can go in the next couple of days, in the next couple of weeks, as they, of course, got themselves this uh, fork happening in the near future. But let's just quickly see what else we got here. We got a ton of Cardano news. Somebody says Cardano's $35 billion price valuation is not justified. We'll get to that one in just a second, but this one first. Breaking. Binance to support Cardano ADA upgrade and hard fork. Binance announced on February 27th, which most likely was another cause of, of all of this pump, at least that's my opinion on these matters, that it was supporting the Cardano upgrade on March 1st. Cardano will hard fork its blockchain in order to upgrade the system, and Cardano's ADA is hitting new price and market cap all-time highs. Support for Cardano has just been crazy, and they are right now the third in the freaking market cap. They beat XRP, they beat DOT, and a lot of people are extremely excited about this, but I keep telling people, be a little bit careful with huge gains like this. Right now we can see, again guys, I'm very bullish on Cardano, so don't get me wrong, Cardano upgrade, the Gaugen, or Gaugen, like, is that how you pronounce it, rollout on March 1st brings changes to the platform that keep it on the cutting edge of decentralized finance. The rise of DeFi platforms in 2020 illustrated the need for interoperability, high speed throughput, and lower transactional costs. While many projects are looking to be able to connect together, Cardano is also working on interconnects at deeper levels. On February 22nd, the project's team announced support for development language Glow. The integration is designed to help developers work across ecosystems. Point being, they got a pretty huge advancement happening on the 1st of March, which is in a couple of days from right now. So a pump prior to a hard fork is definitely not that crazy. And again, the percentages we just saw, it's like 2,600% in the last year or so, and a huge amount of gains in just the last day. But of course, there are people who don't think that it is justified. Cardano's current market valuation isn't justified as it doesn't even have smart contracts, believes a well-known Ethereum proponent. And that's again that debate which you'll always see, right? While ADA bulls rejoice, some fail to see the merits in the current market structure and valuation. According to Anthony Susano, this is a clear example of why cryptocurrency market runs on narrative more so than it does fundamentals. And I saw some people on Twitter state, if XRP doesn't hit a dollar, somewhere throughout this year or somewhere at the end of this year, 
then the whole crypto market really isn't based upon fundamentals or use case, but mostly upon hype and what you can uh, promise, basically, instead of what you can deliver. Quote, the fact that Cardano, a platform that doesn't even have smart contracts, is worth $35 billion based purely on narrative and promises is the perfect example of why crypto runs on 99% narratives and 1% fundamentals. Even worse, the market is saying that Cardano is worth 25% of Ethereum. And that's again a very difficult thing to really pinpoint, right? Because if you start to look at where exactly it can go, then Cardano definitely deserves a lot a lot if you really evaluate it at what it has then yeah it's definitely not one fourth of ethereum unless you start to think about the philosophical side of things and you know as, as i just said where they can get to because what they have could also be based in what technology they possess and what you know is, is already put on paper what they will bring it's, it's a little bit of a difficult one but from the perspective of what has already been built yeah cardano definitely isn't worth as much except for the fact that it's built properly Again, not far, but it is built securely proper, uh, properly, and so, yeah, quite differently from Ethereum, which is just kind of scratch work in comparison. It's a difficult one. I'm going to say it is worth it purely because they got a lot going for them right now, and they're extremely popular, mostly because they want to you know, do it a little bit differently than Ethereum. However, if you really, again, as I said before, said it a couple of times right now in the last minute or so, look at what already they have. Yeah, you might have a good argument to say that they're not worth the current price. Then uh, let's quickly see what else I had here. Uh, we're going to pull an Elon Musk, says Cardano Charles Hoskinson. So there's a couple of things which have also added to the whole Cardano hype. One of them most likely being the idea that Elon Musk was supporting it. And the second one right now is that IOG or slash IOHK is the previous name uh, was are really considering to start developing heavily. We all know they're already working on things quite severely, but they've even put up a new statement right now IOG is considering going to pull an Elon Musk and writing a series of DeFi papers for Cardano that the community can implement. The company currently has so many requests that it is investigating a solution to pass a request to the community via Project Catalyst. In uh, one of the notorious AMAs, Charles Hoskinson once again leaked one or the other piece of news and announcements for the Cardano ecosystem. Charles said that there are currently a lot of cool developments going on in the field of decentralized apps, and IOG is going to pull an Elon Musk like he did with Hyperloop to quote, and actually, we're going to pull an Elon Musk with how he handled Hyperloop. The other day, I sat down reading the peer-to-peer -peer lending white paper that we developed for Marlowe, and I said, you know, you, or sorry guys, we're going to implement this, but it would make a lot more sense to write a series of DeFi papers, just like Elon wrote the Hyperloop paper, and then give it to the community as challenge problems and see who's going to implement those things. So you might see this as some laziness. You might also see this as whoever can get it done the best and the fastest will get rewarded for it. And there are people who can do it most likely even better than uh, IOG, for example, could do it themselves or other parties bundled together. And from the perspective of creativity, it's also a really interesting one, right? So from whatever perspective you want to take a look at it, I like the idea. Um, whether or not the majority of the people will like it, we'll see. All right, we'll definitely see. It's not something I can uh, all all of a sudden say at this point. What else did I have? Economist warns of Bitcoin aristocracy ruling the world. Economist Dr. John Danielson envisions a zero-sum game for Bitcoin where for crypto to succeed, the world must perish. The interesting part about this is it is not a safe haven from a couple of perspectives. The Bitcoin enthusiasts are quite vague on what success means beyond rising prices. They seem more fond of arguments wrapped in mysticism than being economic logic. And again, that's debatable, right? And the full fun fact is, he said Bitcoin could displace gold. That's not what Bitcoin advocates claim they want, nor likely. Hedging against inflation only works if people keep on buying Bitcoin. Otherwise, it's like collecting art. It needs some economic function now missing. And he has a point somewhere. However, the, the bigger point about it is, well, right now, crypto is just so extremely popular that there won't be really be any end. And his warning of Bitcoin aristocracy is a valid one, as, as at this point, we don't really know who has a lot of Bitcoin at the top, right? We don't really know who control it either. And it could become a game of the big uh, holders eventually as well as one thing that people are forgetting with bitcoin and even any other crypto for that matter is as time goes on here there will be a couple of parties who have a ton of it right so let's say there's going to be 12 
no, let's say fifth. No, okay, let's go for twelve parties with a million Bitcoin, and then the last whatever is it going to be three million Bitcoin or so, because the rest are already lost uh, at that point when all the Bitcoin is, is mined. The last Bitcoin are held by us individuals. Most of the money will be locked up inside these platforms like PayPal, Grayscale. Even though Grayscale is not really a bad thing, I'm going to mostly talk about PayPal or Square and stuff like that. They just have the Bitcoin within their platform. It's not really going out. So the use case is completely gone. All we're speculating about that is just people buying and selling it for more gains or for, for movements or whatnot. But the, the real picture, the use case of Bitcoin is definitely not to be seen. And you might say the use case is being a store of value, but no, it's actually the other way around. It is a store of value. And that's why, uh, or yeah, no, wait, sorry guys. The use case can be the store. No, otherwise, I'm, I'm messing myself up with the words here. The store of value can be a use case. And then I'm, I'm trying to say, no, it should be the other way around. A use case could provide it to be a store of value, which as of this point is missing for Bitcoin as it's definitely not a, a really efficient thing to pay with. However, Ethereum is not that fixed either. Cardano may be so though, which is what people are excited about as of this point. Uh, then US SEC may soon approve a Bitcoin ETF. My thoughts on this have actually changed quite a lot over the last couple of weeks. From one perspective, I thought, you know what, if this pulls through, it would actually be pretty bad uh, because Grayscale was trading at a premium and an ETF would mean we all got the same price, so that would definitely take the things down. However, as time elapsed here, the premium on, on, on Grayscale is actually gone and so an ETF would only allow for more people to just enter the space, I would think. It's actually only a good thing. This one we already went over. Let's see what else we had here. I had a ton of articles open. Vice President of Nigeria voices his support for crypto. It is happening, and they're being realistic with all these things. You can't ban it. The Central Bank of Nigeria prohibited crypto transactions with the idea to ban it. However, a lot of others have come up with the idea to not ban it, but regulate it properly, which is definitely what they should go for. One is decentralized exchange to transition to Binance Smart Chain as Ethereum Exodus begins. A lot of people are afraid of Ethereum, which is also why, most likely, once more my opinion, uh, Bitcoin has done so incredibly good. Because Bitcoin has done so... Uh, no, uh, Cardano has done so incredibly good. Because Ethereum is just lacking in a lot of departments and the fees are so ridiculously high, a lot of people are moving over to Polkadot and Cardano. Choppy trading in Ethereum, what is happening? All I wanted to say is, guys, Ethereum, even though I have a lot of it and I'm pretty excited about them, they had a couple of withdrawal suspensions over on Binance. You might say that this is purely because Ethereum is such a high fee and they're really slow right now, but it could also be some manipulation from Binance's perspective because they want to push the Binance smart chain, of course. All right, we don't necessarily know exactly if Ethereum is actually bad or if they're trying to make it look that way because it could also be Cardano, Polkadot, Binance, for example, BNB coin all wanting Ethereum to do bad and they're manipulating it in a certain way to get it done that way, right? So maybe they're putting in billions of dollars purely to make Ethereum look worse. So I don't trust these articles too much and I don't trust some of these trading platforms too much either as some manipulation could be going on and that's something we should keep in the back of our heads that it's all of these guys bundling against Ethereum right now. And then greatest Bitcoin sale in a year. Yeah, we just saw some huge fall downs and a, a good part of it can be attributed to the increase in U.S. bond yields, by the way. And last but not least, Cardano's 35 billion mark cap is not justified, as we said before. I personally think it is. I just think we might see a huge fall or huge increase on March 31st. And that's the official date for everything. And yes, he is partially true that it's mostly based upon hype uh, on the idea that Cardano will do things. But hey. That's always the thing with crypto, right? If you really value it purely for what it has and what it does right now, the whole crypto space would look so much differently as XRP would be a lot higher too and Bitcoin would be all the way at the ground. But right now, it's also the idea of what can make us the most amount of money. What are people talking about like crazy? What are people buying like crazy? And that's the way it's going to be for the next couple of years, I personally think. Having said that, go check out GSX. A link will be down below in the description because right now there's a 10% bonus plus a 5% bonus for using my link. And it's the first gold backed coin. It's a pretty interesting thing. So go check it out. I personally have a couple thousand dollars in this. Uh, it's not a guarantee, by the way, but go check it out.